Hey, this is Mike Annis. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to bring you these videos. Today we're going to talk about Warren Buffett's favorite, well, my favorite quote of Warren Buffett, price is what you pay and value is what you get. Now, now here's, here's the issue here. You can buy great companies and overpay for them. So it could take you years and years to recognize the value. For example, my Ford and General Motors purchases this year in March have appreciated over 100%. So General Motors is up 122% and Ford's up 101%. Matter of fact, Ford's up to about 110%. Since I purchased them, are they great companies to, to own? No, not particularly. They've been around for a hell of a long time. They're not in particularly great industries to be in. However, they ended up being very, very good purchases for me because I bought them at such a low price. So what I paid for these companies, $4 for Ford and about $19 for GM, have more than doubled in value. Now the question is, what am I going to do with them now? Am I going to just sit on them and wait? Well, the answer is I probably will because I don't believe that the true value of these two particular companies has been recognized yet. I wouldn't exactly have called them really super undervalued companies. It's just that the prices were so low, it was almost like I was buying a dollar for 50 cents. So therein gets back to the quote. We're back to the quote again. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. Now the problem in business in general, and in mine in particular, which is the asset recovery business, people just overpay for product. For example, I bought hundreds of computers the other day. Microsoft Surface Pros, they're actually tablets. And Surface Pro 4s and 5s and 6s, and I paid about 50% below the market value. Well, in my business, many of the people that make these types of purchases are purchasing them for maybe 10 or 15% below the market value. They cannot possibly compete with me in the market. So therefore, when I start listing my products that I purchase, because I mostly am in technology business, which is the asset recovery, buying undervalued assets, which is buying undervalued computer inventories, and then I relist them and sell them on major platforms, or I sell them directly through my e-commerce store. I just sell them, wholesale them direct to customers I've accumulated over the years, and I have over 30,000 customers. The problem with my competitors is they just overpaid for the product. So the price that they pay gives them a value that's next to nothing when they go to sell it. Same thing applies with real estate. When I started building some properties overseas, over in East Africa, I paid cash to build these properties. Well, because so much money has poured into Ethiopia and other African countries from people living in the United States, they call it diaspora, it's doubled and tripled the value of the asset. Now, I wouldn't normally build properties in a foreign country, but in this particular case, uh, it's what you would call shooting fish in a barrel. So the price that I paid for the land and for the materials to build the real estate was nothing. So here's some of the rules for purchasing uh, items and the cost of purchasing. So number one rule is never overpay based on market values. So you have to be buying something well below the market value, which is very hard to do, especially in the stock market. As Warren Buffett and his sidekick Charlie Munger would tell us, you know, the values are just not there anymore because there's just too many people bidding up the prices of the stock and there's too much free money floating around. So it just drives the price up of everything. It's very hard. You have to wait for a crazy thing to happen like this COVID and that, that's when you jump in. And I'm sure we're going to have another downturn and there'll be other opportunities. I'm not sure when those opportunities are going to come about, but they will come. Number two, market values are sometimes wrong in illiquid markets. So an illiquid market would be real estate industry or in my particular business asset recovery. Liquid market would be stocks we can buy and sell things quickly. Market values are often less wrong in liquid markets. So liquid markets self-adjust relatively quickly because there's so many people in there buying and selling the assets. So you're not going to find too many values in the stock market, at least not today. Competition drives up prices. That's number four. Number five, if you make a mistake, you got to get out. So as soon as you recognize that you do make a, that you did make a mistake, you got to get out of that as quickly as you as you possibly can, so you don't continue to lose money. 
Number six, don't listen to market forecasters. Market forecasters know nothing about what's going to happen in the market. They're just out there to sell advertising so you can watch and listen to them talk about things. And most of the people that are market forecasters don't make any money anyway. I'd rather focus on billionaires like Buffett and Munger and Ackman and and Carl Icahn and other guys like that. Number six, don't listen to market forecasters. I already said that one. Sorry. Seven, evaluate your purchase price based on numbers, not what people say. So always look at the number. Don't listen to what they say, but do your own calculations. Number eight, seek advice from people that know more than you do when applicable. So before you buy something, for example, we bought a bunch of product the other day. I need to call a buddy of mine so he could explain to me what the product was that I was buying because I was just a little bit uncertain. So, so seek out people that know a hell of a lot more than I do and before I start buying anything. And number nine, don't rush in. It's better to get the facts. If you know exactly what's going on at the time of your purchase, then you can move expeditiously to acquire. You don't have to buy it all up at one time. You could buy in increments. Okay? So the other thing that you have to know is if you want to play in this game called price is what you pay, value is what you get, you have to learn how to say no. So just say no. Warren Buffett has another great quote here. He says, you know, the more people say no, the richer they usually are. So the difference between successful people and really successful people, Buffett says, is that really successful people say no to almost everything. And that's the case with me. Almost all the transactions and all the deals I look at, the answer is almost always no. The chances that that you have a great opportunity that comes along It comes every now and then. So maybe one out of a hundred times you're going to find something. Sometimes you're lucky you find one or two or three of them in a row. But that's rare. So don't be in too much of a rush to get to where you're going because these opportunities will come. You just have to be prepared. So that's another important part of the rule is you always have to be prepared. Therefore, you always have to be in the game or I say you always have to be in the market. I'm not talking about stock markets. I'm talking about whatever business that you're in. So I'm basically in the asset recovery business for technology. So I always have to be in that business. I always have to be reading. I always have to be asking questions and looking around out there. And I look at all kinds of opportunities come across my desk, but I only choose a few. But the few that I choose need to be at least 50% below market value. Market value in my particular profession is determined by people like Amazon and eBay because I'm selling product basically in the retail market. Okay, so in conclusion... The price I pay for things should be reflected in the profit and income. In addition, I should see appreciation. So when I'm buying real estate, I need to see appreciation, especially if the cash is not coming in in great quantities. Business that you own and control 100% should reflect all these things. So you should, should be marketable securities purchased in publicly traded companies. You have to take a look and see what the value is when you're buying it. Don't just rush out and buy something because everybody says to do it. Gaining wealth and seeing the cash come in and then reinvesting it happens over time. Nothing happens right away. Price is what you pay. If you make a mistake, get out. Value is what you actually get after you purchase the assets. This is Mike Addis. Thanks for joining us on this video. It's always our pleasure. Don't forget to hit that subscriber button. And also check out our new blog under Mattis Cash. That's M-A-D-D-I-S dot cash dot com. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. Please give us those comments. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next video.